All right, so we have already talked about how Fourier series can be used to approximate any function that we, any periodic function that we defined as continuous or piecewise within a specific interval by simply taking an infinite sum of cosine and sine functions. And in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend that concept to applying the Fourier, to finding the Fourier series expansion of a function that is not periodic. So in this case, we have this function that is simply a linear equation, 2x, and this should actually be 2 pi minus 2 pi here. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to grab a little portion of that function. So you can imagine that this function would keep going like this. If we, would, if we were to take the entire x-axis, it would go to infinity on both sides. But in this case, we're just going to take this portion that is 2 pi. So basically we have this um, interval here that is symmetric about the x-axis, the y-axis. And basically we have period 2 pi. So what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that this function is periodic and that it only reaches these boundaries and then it keeps repeating and then using that concept we're going to find the Fourier series expansion so what the Fourier series expansion is going to do it is going to plot a function that is going to look a little bit like this so when, when the terms approach infinity it is going to look a little bit like this and then it is going to go like this and even though the real function is not periodic like this, what this Fourier series expansion is doing, it is representing that approximation to that little interval, because all it's doing is repeating the same interval over and over again in infinite cycles. So this is the idea behind applying a Fourier series to a non-periodic function. And this is quite important because when we actually go to solve certain partial differential equations using separation of variables, the Fourier series expansion of a non-periodic function is going to be quite useful for solving uh, those equations. So let's get started with this problem. So we need to calculate the Fourier coefficient a0. So the first thing to notice is that is, is this function even or odd? Well, it's an odd function, so we know that by definition a, a0 should be 0 because this is the average value of the function within this interval and because the interval is symmetric and the function is odd, then these two areas are going to cancel out as we have discussed previously. Now, the other thing that we also know is that um, because this function is odd, then an is also going to be zero because that's one of the main definitions that we introduced in the beginning of um, this little series on Fourier series. And basically, the only, the only element that we're going to have is bn, of course. So we're going to have bn is going to be equal to 1 over half the period, which is in this case pi, and it is going to be bounded by these two limits on the interval, and then we're going to have the following function, so we're going to have 2x times sine nx, and this is going to be equal to 1 over pi, and I'm just going to split, so we're going to use integration by parts, we're going to integrate this first, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the 2 outside because that's just a constant. So 2 over pi. And then we're going to put our integration integration by parts formula inside. So this is going to become minus x cosine nx over n minus minus that cosine, remember? So that's going to become a plus the integral of cosine nx over n dx, and then this is evaluated between minus pi and pi. So now we're going to have the following, 2 over pi minus x cosine x over n plus this is going to become sine, so this is going to be sine of nx over n squared, because remember we're now dividing by n, so we have to multiply that n by this n, and this is going to be from minus pi to pi. All right, so all we need to do now is introduce those limits, and then this is going to give us the following formula. So let's have minus pi cosine of n pi over n minus pi cosine minus n pi over n and this is going to be the following. 
And the reason for that is that when we put pi into a <coughs> into sine, remember that for all multiples, all integer multiples of pi on sine, we get zero. And the same applies for minus pi. So that's just going to be zero all over. So we're only going to be left with this term. And basically, we're going to have these two things here. So now the next thing that we need to do is, of course, to um, add these two together. So that this is just going to be equal to minus 4 over n times cosine n pi. Because remember that cosine is an even function. So this here becomes plus cosine. And then we have minus minus that. So that's repeated. And the pi's cancel out. So we're left with this expression. And now what we can infer from this is that if you remember that all multiple integers of pi, all multiple integers of pi are going to be the following. We're going to get minus 1. So this term here is going to be minus 1 to the power of n. For n is equal to 1, 2, 3, and so on. And when we have this minus here, so that means that we have minus 1 times minus 1, n. So we add the powers together. So that's n plus 1. And then this expression is going to become, so bn is going to be equal to 4 over n minus 1 n plus 1. And then that means that we're going to have the following terms. We're going to have 4, then b2 is going to be minus 2, then b3 is going to be 4 and 3. So in the end, we can write our Fourier series expansion for this non-periodic function as f of x equals to 2x, so that's the original function, and this is equal to 4 times the sum from n equals to 1 of minus 1 to the power of n plus 1 over n times sine nx. And this is going to be our final result. And remember that we can extend this even to uh, functions, as we discussed previously, to functions that don't necessarily have a period involving pi. We can extend it to any period L, so we're going to have something like minus L to L. So we always, the, the, the idea behind Fourier series is that we always want to take an interval that is symmetric about the y-axis. We want to have the same amount of function here as here. And that's the general idea behind it. Even if a function is not really even or symmetric, we want to take an interval like this so that when we go about actually applying this um, Fourier series expansion, the integration, we, we get nice results. So we can have any function, could be something like this. And then basically our period is going to be 2L. And that means our Fourier coefficients are going to be, this one is going to be 1 over 2L from minus L to L, f of x dx, because remember this is just the average, so we need to divide it by interval. Then an is going to be 1 over half of L, so that's uh, half of the period, sorry, that's 1 over L minus L, L f of x. And then the cosine and sine functions are going to be adjusted uh, accordingly. So we're going to have this factor n pi x over L dx. And obviously, if our period happens to be, if our L happens to be pi, as it was in this case, it would cancel out, and it, this reduces the cosine of nx. But that's the general idea behind this. And in the next video, we're going to explore even more applications of this, and we're going to discuss what half-range range expansions are. So sometimes we may have functions that are defined within a non-symmetric um, range, so something like from 0 to L, and we may have something like a function like this. And it is possible, using the idea from Fourier series expansion, to expand this into a symmetric or anti-symmetric function by either taking um, the function on an even root or an odd root and then having a different kind of expansion. So that's what we will do in the next video.